Well, perhaps I can respond best simply by citing uh, an example of uh, cooperation uh, in the project of giving prophet prophetic witness uh, and challenging cultural elites and, in fact, economic elites uh, across the uh, traditions of faith. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Sheikh Hamza and I joined together uh, in a very, very public letter which we addressed to the chief executive officers of the five largest hotel chains uh, in the United States. Uh, chains like uh, Marriott and uh, Hilton and uh, so forth. And we uh, challenged them to remove the offering of pornography from their hotel rooms. We made an argument. The argument did not hesitate to invoke our faiths as a Muslim and a Christian, but it went beyond simply the invocation of scripture uh, to make a philosophical and sociological argument concerning the harms of pornography, the injustice of pornography, the injustice of seeking to, econo uh, to benefit economically uh, by tempting the men and increasingly women using pornography in the hotel rooms uh, to have a resort to it. Now, I'm using this example of pornography because it happens to be a convenient one on which I have direct experience with Muslim uh, Christian cooperation, but we could use many other uh, examples. So this is simply for the sake of an example. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making the focus on pornography because I think it's the only bad thing or even the worst thing uh, out there. But it is an example of a, a uh, Christian uh, scholar and a Muslim intellectual leader joining together to challenge cultural and economic elites to make a change. We said to them, in effect, you should be embarrassed. You should be embarrassed to be offering this to your customers. We asked them to consider the woman who is depicted in the pornographic representations. Now, very often we know these are women who are trafficked into the porn trade. These are not the willing, free choosing subjects of the libertarian utopia fantasy. But even if some of the women involved are freely consenting to do this, we ask the CEOs, would you want your beloved mother to be depicted this way? Your dear sister to be depicted in this way? But if you would not want men to think of your mother and your sister in this way, why do you seek to profit from the depiction of a woman you don't know who is someone else's beloved mother or sister or daughter in this way? We're simply appealing to the principle shared by the Jews and the Christians, as Brenda pointed out, the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you would not want to see your sister, your daughter, your mother depicted in this way, you must not implicate yourself in this to make money. Mm -hmm. And we got a mixed reaction. We got a, a good deal of publicity. I think we helped to raise the consciousness of the public about the pornography issue in a way that was being ignored. Uh, and the reaction varied. Hilton wrote back basically a libertarian letter saying, we don't tell, want to tell our customers what they should watch. So we make everything available to them. Now, that's a very bad response. Obviously, they would not make anti-Semitic offerings available to their customers, even if their customers wanted them and would pay money. They wouldn't make racist offerings available to their customers, even if it was economically mm -hmm. beneficial. So we still have to work on the people at Hilton. But the people at Marriott wrote back to us and said, we are removing the pornography from our hotel rooms. Give us, give us time, give us time. Now, frankly, Sheikh Hamza and I do not know why it takes time. <laughs> Money. I, I know how to remove things from my life when I want them to be removed from, from my life. They can remove things from the hotel rooms. But at least they felt the shame. And uh, we got uh, a, a, a positive response and action is being taken. Um, so that's just one example. We could, we could go through others, but I think it's a good one.